This is something I call the true history of the Tower of Hanoi, with Sogrates and Amphibianes. You will play the part of Sogrates. And Amphibianes plays the part of himself. Through painstaking research, I have traced the beginnings of the Tower of Hanoi puzzle to ancient Greece. I have discovered a lost manuscript about the greatest philosopher of all time, though long since forgotten, at one time he was so great that people called him Socrates. This manuscript describes a dialogue between Socrates and one of his students, Amphibianes, who was always hopping all over him with questions. Throughout the following reconstructed dialogue, notice how Socrates employs the Socratic method, by which the student is brought to knowledge through a query such as, what's so great about that? Remember, you are playing the part of Socrates, and Amphibianes is playing the part of himself. I will help you with the Socrates part. Oh, great, Socrates! I want to learn the secrets of the Tower of Hanoi. I've been roaming around all day trying to figure it out. First, you must realize the Tower of Hanoi is not really in the Orient. It can be found at the temple in Athens, Lily Hopper. Yeah, that's the whole problem. It's Greek to me. That is no accident, I suppose. What knowledge do you seek? I am hoping to discover how to solve the famous puzzle so that I can determine when the world will end. Would you please enlighten me? Please, 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 please. Sure, old fly eater. Let's pick a specific example. Atlantic, Pacific, I don't care, but gentlemen prefer ponds. Why an example? Let's jump right to the solution. You've got to learn to swim before you can hop, Tadpole. So let us simulate the puzzle with four discs. Imagine that there are four priests, each responsible to move a disc, and we must move the tower from peg one to peg three. If you were priest four, the one responsible for the bottom disc, what would you do? I'd say, hey, priest three, get your disc off of me to peg two so that I can move my disc from peg one to peg three. Simple. Then I'd move my disc from peg one to peg three, and then I'd say, hey, Priest three, move your disc from peg two to peg three. Done. What about the other discs? No, my problem, man. But if it were? Same deal. I'd ask the priest who is responsible for the disc that is immediately above mine to move it. Then I would move my own disc. Finally, I would ask the other priest to move theirs back on top. But how does that help? I'm a visual learner. I have to see it. So, at this point, it would be a good idea for you to have the Tower of Hanoi puzzle. If you don't have one, quarter nickel dime or quarter nickel penny dime would would help. Uh, stack them up. Make sure that you have three locations that you recognize as being the pegs, and follow along. Let H N R S represent the call. Hey, please move disc N from peg R to peg S. Also, M R goes to S represents an actual move of the top disc on peg R to peg S. Now imagine what the solution would look like for four discs. So if you have your coins lined up, let's let peg 1 be the far left, peg 2 be the middle, and peg 3 be the right. Then H413 is the call, move the fourth disc, in this case the quarter, from peg one to peg three, from the left to the right. Now clearly you cannot do that until what? Until disc three, the nickel, has been moved off of peg one and is on peg two. Then you can move what? You can move the top disc on peg one, which is really only the quarter, to peg three, and then from you can take the nickel from peg two and put it on peg three. So now the quarter has the nickel on top of it on the right. So now see if you can complete the rest of the chart. You should have something that looks like this. 
Pause a minute and see if you can notice any relationships between the calls and the moves. Also, see if you can notice any relationship between a call and the two consecutive calls on both sides of the move. You should notice this pattern. Okay, now line your coins back up on the left and follow the moves. Always moving the top coin from the peg that's mentioned. So first of all, move from peg one to peg two. So that means the dime goes off the top to the middle. Follow the rest from peg one to peg three, two to three, one to two, three to one, three to two, one to two, one to three, two to three, two to one, three to one, two to three, one to two, one to three, and two to three. Voila. Okay, your line again. How long would it take to move them all? Assuming that it takes one second for a priest to move a disc. In other words, I need to count the number of moves. For one disc, it is one move. For two discs, the other disc must be, be moved off, then the bottom disc moved, and then the other disc moved back on. Three moves. For three discs, it takes three to move the top two off, one move for the bottom disc, and three moves to move the top two back on that seven. And finally, for four discs, it takes seven moves to move the three discs off the bottom disc, one move for the bottom disc, and seven to move them back, a total of 15. Perhaps if you organize the information in a table, you would see a pattern. So, do so. And notice, 2 to the power of n minus 1 plus 1 plus 2 to the power of n minus 1 simplifies to 2 to the nth power minus 1. You may want to check that. In other words, 2 to the n minus 1 for n discs. So for 100 discs, it would take more than 2 to the 100th minus 1 seconds. Cool! What's so great about that? Don't you see? The world won't croak for a long time. I figured that out all by myself. I can't wait to tell the guys back at the plant. They will be green with envy. Thanks. Bye. And that is the true story of the Tower of Hanoi. Honest. If you enjoyed this story, you may want to investigate the poem about the Tower of Hanoi in MathCamp.